This video is about the best linear approximation interpretation of the population linear projection. That's kind of a mouthful. So we're going to look at this CEF defined in line 123 here, which is not a linear CEF. It's sort of the same shape as the one in the textbook where it'll sort of go down at first, but then flatten out after that. Um, now, just to, for intuition and visualization purposes, I'm going to generate some points to plot, uh, but you can think of these points as representing the true population distribution itself. Uh, so I'm gonna generate that with these lines of code here. Um, what's going to happen is there are two different populations where they have the same CEF from up here, but the marginal distribution of X is different in each population. So in the first population represented by this X01, the values zero and one have a lot of probability and the value two is very unlikely. In contrast, the other population, x12, values one and two will be very likely and value zero is relatively unlikely. Uh, so I'll add in a little bit of um, noise here and then generate corresponding y values. Um, when I plot it, since there's only three values of x, I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, jitter to the uh, x values just so they're easier to see, uh, but that doesn't have any actual meaning to it. So the first thing I'll do is plot the population, the first population. And so what you'll see here is uh, the values 0 and 1. Again, that's where most individuals in this population are, and there's just sort of a few very low probability of having a value of two. And then within that, we can look at the CEF. Again, it sort of starts up here at 40, and comes down to 20, and then stays flat at 20. So that'll be the same CEF in both populations. The only thing that will change is uh, the x distribution. Uh, so given this population, what is the best linear approximation of the CEF? Clearly we can't perfectly fit the true CEF with a straight line because it has this kink in it, this bend. Uh, so if we tried to match this first part, we would end up missing over here. If we tried to match the flat part, we would end up missing over here. Uh, so it turns out this uh, next line of code will figure out the uh, best linear approximation. Um, again, I'm sort of cheating by using a data sample and just running OLS. Um, but this is what it would look like. So we can see it doesn't perfectly fit the sloped part, but it's very close to the true CEF at both x equals zero and x equals one. Whereas at x equals two, there's a pretty big error there. It's not a good approximation of the true CEF over there. Now, does this make sense given how the BLA is defined? So if you remember in the, <coughs> excuse me, definition, the best linear approximation is a linear function that's minimizing a particular expected value. And implicit in that expected value is the distribution of x. So what it's doing is it's looking at this difference between the true CEF and the linear function at x equals 2, and it's squaring that. And it's looking at this difference and squaring that, 
looking at this difference at x equals zero and squaring that, but instead of just averaging those squared differences, it takes a weighted average where more weight is given to the x values that have a higher population probability. That's what that expected value is doing. So here, when x equal to zero or one has high probability, it will try to make those errors very small, whereas this one is getting a very low weight because x equals two has such a low probability, so it lets that uh, error get larger in order to overall minimize that uh, particular measure of distance. Now, how would this look different if instead zero had very low probability and two had very high probability? So we'll again start by plotting the uh, population. Uh, so has the same CEF, it's exactly the same. If you flick back and forth between the two pictures, you'll see this solid blue CEF is literally not moving at all. Um, even these points are not moving because that's not changing. The only thing that's changing is now there's lots of x equals two instead of x equals zero. So what, let's try to guess how that will affect the best linear approximation. So now x equals zero, very low probability. So that becomes relatively unimportant when we take that weighted average of approximation errors. So essentially the, the BLA will not really care even if we're off by a lot over here. But over here, x equals two and x equals one that do have high probability and thus high weight in that weighted average, uh, it'll try to fit those pretty closely. So we would guess it should be similar to, but not exactly on the straight line, and then pretty far off over here. So maybe a little bit of upward slope, but not a lot. So let's run this uh, final line of code here. We can see that is exactly what happens. So it stays very close to the true CEF, though not exactly. At x equals one and two, where there's high probability, and it lets there be a larger CEF approximation error at x equals zero because that has a very low population probability.